Welcome to the A to Z of Dynamics 365 Marketing. And we've reached the letter G, and this is all about GDPR, so let's take a look. Okay, so GDPR is a fun one. Not really, but GDPR stands for the General Data Protection Regulation. And it is something that has been imposed in the European Union, and it basically is rules for organizations that offer goods and services to people in the EU or collect and analyze data tied to EU residents. So it's basically enforced no matter where you are located. It's really about your customers. All right. So how can we make sure that we are compliant when we're collecting data when we're using Dynamics 365 marketing? So the first thing is if we look at a contact record, we have on the details t uh, tab, we've got this data protection area. So we have these different levels of consent that somebody could give. And really these consent levels that we have here, they're really just out of the box recommendations from Microsoft. It's up to you to really decide what the relevance of each of those levels are and how you're going to use them and apply them into your marketing activities. So we have essentially all the way from no consent is given. In other words, you cannot email me as a contact all the way up to, yes, you can email me, you can send me whatever you'd like. And also I'm okay with you tracking my activity in terms of clicking on emails, going to websites, all of that sort of stuff. So we have things that are set in place that allow us to make sure we adhere to GDPR, but it's really up to you and your organization to determine what your GDPR policy is and how you're going to actually make sure that you adhere to it. So also on this data protection area, we have a field that is basically saying, is somebody a child? Yes or no. So that's basically somebody that is typically under 18 years old. So there might be extra protection that needs to be um, provided. Then if it is a child, we can look up to another contact record and say this is the parent or custodian for that child. And then finally, we've got this tracking, which basically lets you determine whether someone is allowed to be tracked or not. So if somebody says, I don't want you to be tracking anything, then that can be changed to do not allow. Okay, so we've got those settings here on the contact record. Let's see how we can actually use them and what we can do. So if I go to the settings area and if I go into the data protection, by default, there are no data protection records set up. So you'd have to create a new one. And when we create this data protection record, we are basically just giving it a name. So GDPR in this case makes sense. And what we can do is we can say, do we want to re respect consent levels? So if we're sending out some content and we've said that this customer journey, the consent level is three, we want to make sure that that respect, uh, sorry, that consent level is actually respected and we don't send it to anybody that is a two or a one and so on. And then also we can basically say we want to log the consent changes as they are made for a specific contact. So if we go back to our Jane Doe, and we're looking here and we have the details and we have the consent level. If I look at the related records, so you may actually have this as a tab on your specific page, I can go into the GDPR consent change records and I can see here that this has been changed and was originally one, then it was updated and then it was changed again. So we can see that log of when GDPR levels, the consent levels were actually updated. So let's see how we can actually then do this for a contact so that they can actually manage these things themselves. So if we go into our marketing emails, um, I have, first of all, a marketing email that is going to be used as a double opt-in email. So along with GDPR, you might also want to make sure that you've got something called double opt-in set up so that someone's actually having to confirm when they fill out a form and they make changes to their subscription levels, they get an email that says, okay, can you confirm this? So it's just making sure that they were actually the person that initiated that. So if we just put this into edit mode, 
we can see that the information about this is that it is a transactional email and the content type is a confirmation request. And that's what we're using it for. So that when somebody clicks confirm, it will actually acknowledge and say, yes, the changes that this person made online are accurate and we want to update their record. What we also then have is if I go into the marketing forms, Let's go into my marketing forms area. And if I look at a, not the default subscription center form, but I've created a new subscription form. And if we go ahead and we review this, I have several fields on here that I've added. The first one being that consent level. So we can actually ask the customer to update it themselves. Now, if you're going to do this, you want to make sure that you have something clear so that the customer or the contact that's looking at this knows and understands what those different levels actually mean. There's no point in putting it on there and them not having a clue what profiling or marketing or subscriptions mean and so on. We also then have that tracking enabled. So you could say, do you give consent for us to track interactions, allow or do not allow? Then we can have different subscription lists that somebody can subscribe to. And then finally, we could just say, do not email me at all and they can they can opt out. If we then look at the summary tab, we can see here that for this specific form, I've enabled double opt in and the email that we just looked at, that is the confirmation email that will be sent. And then once the confirmation happens, we're going to basically take them to a thank you page on a website that will say thanks and your subscription is confirmed. So now that we know that we have several pieces that we need to set up, if I go into my email and I can see that I've got an email about something and at the bottom, we always have to have that unsubscription or that unsubscribe link. If I click on that, it's then taking me to a subscription center page that I have embedded the form onto my website. It's pre-populated various fields. And it's basically saying, okay, well, this is the consent level right now. I might be okay with saying, I actually am okay with you sending me stuff about subscriptions. I might actually want to opt out of getting stuff about surveys, but I'm okay with the newsletter. If I did do not email me, that would basically change it so that I've opted out and the do not allow bulk email would be changed to do not allow. So this is giving somebody con complete control so that they can actually um, update their settings for subscriptions. I'm going to go ahead and submit that. Now what's going to happen is based on the fact that I said I have double opt-in turned on for that specific form, what will happen is we'll end up getting a second email that will be the one that says, okay, now I'll go ahead and confirm that. And that's the double opt-in. So now here we have that email has come through. Please confirm your subscription changes. And then I'm going to click I confirm. And now we can see we're taken to that page that says, okay, the subscription has been confirmed. If we now go back in and we look back at Jane's record, so let's go back into her contact record. This will take a moment to update, but once we've gone ahead and we've said we confirm that subscription, what we should end up seeing is back into this um, consent change record. Now we can see that we actually have our new log that has been put in here. So we can see that it was changed using the subscription center. So we know that it came from this specific form. So therefore it must have been Jane that had updated that herself. So if we look down here, let's just go ahead and refresh this screen. So now we can see there that it's been changed and it now shows the consent level of three. Okay, so there's a ton of stuff on the Microsoft documentation website for the marketing app, all about privacy and compliance and GDPR. There's all kinds of different things that you might want to do in terms of um, basically going through and if somebody says they want a to request all of the data that you have on file for them, you could use customer journeys. Um, if somebody says, I want you to forget me, I don't want you to be storing any of my data, there's different options for that as well. So definitely a big topic, something you need to be aware of, and also make sure that you've got stuff set up so that you are GDPR compliant. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here 
and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.